In the first video in this series, I poured the concrete base for my new CNC. I left the forms on and let that dry for about a week. And if we look at the bottom, we can see some very fine cracks. And these are not unexpected. These are unequal drying cracks. When you make concrete and parts of it are different thicknesses, it dries at different rates and you're gonna get small cracks like this. And the cracks are almost certainly not a problem at all. But in the category of it can't hurt, I'm gonna spread some polyurethane construction adhesive and actually squeeze it down into those cracks and let that dry. So I did that and then the next day I started stripping out the formwork. And the outside, of course, is the easiest part. And you can see the quality of the finish that I got here. It's quite smooth. And when I got the outside done, I had to then flip it over so I could strip the inside. And I got to tell you that this thing is insanely heavy. Like I said, there's 200 pounds of concrete here. And while I can lift that much weight, it's not easy. And you certainly don't want to drop this. So I got the bottom of the form taken off and now I have to lay it down again and you can see me pondering this problem and I started to actually tip it over here and I decided that this wasn't a smart move. I don't have any leverage from this angle so what I decided to do was actually turn it around, push it ahead and tip it over back towards me on the end. And that way I have more control. Now in the first video I talked about some reasons why I'm rebuilding the CNC. So while you're watching me struggle with this, I'll point out another reason why I'm doing this rebuild. And it has to do with this concrete base itself. This is heavy and solid and it doesn't move. And one of the problems I have with the machine that I made before is that whenever the spindle was cutting, it was violently shaking the whole machine. And at one point, the laptop that controls the CNC almost fell off the table that was on with the CNC. So with 200 pounds of concrete, you've got a lot more mass and there's no way that the spindle moving around violently will ever shake this base. Now I can start stripping out the formwork on the inside and that comes out in pieces, of course, and I had to do some cutting on some of the parts. All of the formwork, or most of it anyway, that comes out of here is disposable and I knew that from the beginning. You're never going to get this out in full pieces that you can reuse. Now there was another way to form this so that I wouldn't have to struggle as much to get it out and that's to include some draft angles as in the sides would be angled outwards towards the top and that would make the formwork come out easier. But I didn't want that. I wanted the sides of this base to be as square to the bed as possible. So that was a trade-off between easy stripping and the criteria that I wanted. Okay, I got another reason why I'm rebuilding this CNC. And it has to do with this area at the back of the base where it dips down. And I designed it this way so that there'll be a place for the coolant to run. We'll call that a sump. And that's where the pump for the coolant will sit and pump up to flow over the work that I'm doing. In that first video, I alluded to the fact that I made a mistake with the formwork and I didn't support it properly. And here's where I found that out. The bed isn't flat like I wanted it to be. It's actually humped up. The weight of the concrete was too much for that 5 8 inch melamine and it actually pushed it down. I didn't expect that. I didn't think I would need more bracing in there. But now I got to try to fix that. It's not really that bad and I could leave it of course and just screw down the spoil board and flatten that. But I really prefer for this to be closer to flat to begin with. So I put the diamond blade on my angle grinder and I ground it down. And I use water to try to keep the dust down. So I spent about an hour doing that and then to make sure that there weren't any ridges that I missed, I went over it with a stone and I checked it with the square and yes, that is a lot flatter. And I don't think I'm bragging here when I say that I'm pretty good with an angle grinder and pretty good at flattening concrete like this. When I was happy with the flatness of the bed, I did the cross string trick to check to make sure that there's no twist in this base. 
And the way this works is you string a thread from corners on both rails and where they meet in the middle, they should just touch. And you can see here that is the case. So what that means is that the top of those rails are coplanar with each other. And this is the cheapest and easiest way to check that. Concrete takes roughly 30 days to cure. And in that time, it gives up its moisture. And to demonstrate that, I've got a moisture meter here that I'm putting on the concrete floor of my shop. And you can see the moisture content is less than 10%. And when I take it and I put it on the bed, you can see that it's still sitting at more than 20% which is a bit too wet for sealing it. So I gave it a few more days and it got down to less than 20%. And I figured that was dry enough to give it a coat of oil-based polyurethane to act as a sealant. Now, technically this concrete is waterproof as in water won't run through it, but it will soak water if it's not sealed. Even though I did a really good job with that grinder, that bed is still not perfectly flat. And I thought an easy way to fix that would be to pour a layer of resin on top of it. And I happen to have some casting resin, the stuff in the black bottle here and the yellow jug. And as it turns out, I should never have done this. This stuff was way too old. I bought this years ago, but I did run a test and that's what that arrow was pointing to that gray patch on the piece of OSB. So I crossed my fingers and I mixed it up and I poured it in. And I guess there are two reasons why it foamed up like this. First is that I poured it in too thick. I should have mixed up a smaller portion and poured that in. And that way it probably wouldn't have foamed up because it doesn't heat up. And like I said, it was too old. I should never have done this to begin with. Luckily though, because it is foam, it came out relatively easy. So I spent the next hour chipping it out with a hammer and chisel and actually making cuts in it with the skill saw so that I could take out bigger pieces at a time. So lesson learned on that stuff, never use it when it's old and never try to pour it thick. Now back down to the old CNC, I can start making the first aluminum parts for the new CNC, a kind of an inception moment here where the old machine makes the new machine. And you might notice that I'm not using the trim router anymore. I actually sprung for a proper spindle, knowing that I'd be making a new one and it would be worthy of the expense. And these first two parts here go right on the front rails and they serve two purposes. First, they make that front edge there a lot more durable. Think of it almost like an exoskeleton. And also they house the bearing for the lead screws on the Y rail. And to get these fastened in the right place, what I'm doing is I'm screwing them onto pieces of wood that'll hold them square. And rather than trying to screw this in place to begin with, what I'm doing is I'm using polyurethane construction adhesive to glue them on and I'll let that glue set up. And that way I can drill the holes after and not have to worry about them moving. Now, while that was happening, I went on to making some other aluminum parts. These are the rail caps, and I need these because they'll screw down to the concrete base, and they'll also screw into the plywood that I'm gonna use to extend the sides. This is scrap eight inch aluminum that I'm cutting to the right width and length, and then I can drill a series of holes that line up with those anchors that I cast into the concrete. And I want to point out that some people took exception to me calling this concrete because it didn't have any gravel in it. And no surprise there, I'm well aware of how nitpicky and pedantic some viewers can be when watching these videos. But I'm willing to bet that if those people came into my shop and saw the base sitting on my workbench and I asked them what they thought it was made from, I'd almost guarantee that they would say concrete. It looks like concrete because that's what it is, even if it doesn't have gravel in it. The next day, the glue was dry enough so that I could remove the wood and drill the holes 
for the anchors that will mechanically fasten these plates to the concrete. I got a hammer drill and a concrete bit that I'm going to use to drill into the concrete to put in plastic anchors to fasten those plates mechanically. The glue I use to hold the plates on is strong, but it doesn't really stick to aluminum that well, so I'm adding these screws. And yes, I'm putting more of that glue in the screw holes before I slide in the anchors. In the next video, I'll be continuing to build. I'll be adding those rail caps that I just made and getting the sides extended up and adding in the back extension as well.